Hello and welcome to Provisional SARS webinar. Today's subject is Provisional SARS CAM2, the application. Uh, today we're going to touch more the um, advanced technical features that this application has to offer and less on the more, um, let's say, uh, attractive features such as, uh, I don't know, let's search by face. I'm gonna search my face just for an example. To show you the abilities that this application has to offer so I've pictured myself I was searching from a period of time to a period of time then I get results sorted out by similarity rate as you can see 100% or 99 98 and uh, down going uh, to the left we can see the names of the cameras that captured my my face in the middle we can see the time if we just press the record immediately we can see <laughs> that's a bad record of mine but okay get a point and we can see a couple of more results. Now, all of those things, the more attractive features, has been already discussed and demonstrated in the seminar part. Uh, Provision ISLs came to seminars. So whoever is uh, interested, you can go and watch that, uh, uh, that seminar. Today we're going to touch the more technical features. So let's begin. So to start, all we have to do is to press the upper left button and immediately access the advanced options. So let's start by going into local and let's see what we have here. First of all, we have playback prior to push, pull, to push message, which means that whenever someone crossed the line or entered the serial area or just a movement has been detected and we want to get a not notification over it, then we will see a, a push message. Once we press it, we will see 10 seconds before that event and during the event and of course moving on. What is the notification type? Reserved disk space so the phone will only be used, uh, the application will use only 50 megabytes of the phone's memory. Recycle, recycle recording, once those 50 megabytes has ended it will start to FIFA to overwrite. If we disable that then we will, we will no longer have new recordings or uh, snapshots split snapshots actually this is pretty cool if this is not selected then once we take a snapshot we, we, we will only get uh, the snapshot that we want you see only one screen is being flashed but if you will go here and uh, split snapshots then we will get all of the screen flashed which means that we will basically get if you will go into file we will see all of the photos being taken at once from all of the NVR Okay, let's continue. Uh, favorites. In favorites, we can basically edit the names of the groups and we can, uh, of course, delete them if we want. Um, okay. Launch setting. This is how we determine how the application will start. Will nothing happen when we start the application? Do we want a certain uh, favorite group to start or a certain device maybe? or the last uh, channels that were open. Gesture password, if you want to add another layer of security to our application so no one can open it without us or without knowing the password. Um, skin rotation correction, some smartphones has uh, a special resolution so here we can adjust the application to the phone, to the resolution. On screen display, here we can see, once we enable it, we can see the NVR and the camera's name on the video itself. Reverse PTZ direction control. If we will swipe down, the camera will look up. If we will swipe left, the camera will look right and vice versa. PTZ gestures. Uh, usually it is on off. Let's show an example of what it, it actually does. So here we have a PTZ. And once I press the PTZ option, the PTZ button right here, I can see all of the gestures that tells me what can I do and what I can't do with the camera. Very simple. Uh, automatic connection. Once this uh, feature is set to enable, then we will automatically see all of the NVRs. If you press here, we will see all of our devices. If they are online, as you can see here on the right uh, mark, or uh, offline, like here. This one is not uh, online. So. If I'll for a second disable it, you will be able to see. Okay, now we can see that everything here is offline. 
of course we would always li like that to be uh, on automatic moving on to remote settings here we can control the settings of our remote devices with our application so we have two devices here, a demo, room and VR and DVR. Let's for example go to the NVR and see our options. Uh, let's start with camera. So here we have two options, add and edit a camera. If we're going to add a camera, we can see that we can add a camera quickly. So the NVR basically shows uh, all of the cameras that are in his LAN. Of course, all we have to do is to mark them and press the disk on the upper right corner, but we are not going to do that right now. We can add a camera manually in case we want to add a camera remotely. So if the NVR is in a, in, a, in the United States and the camera is in Thailand, we can connect the both of them. Of course, we can do that with uh, different protocols. Now, since we have integration with uh, Hikvision and Dahua, so we can use their protocol as well, as well as Onvif, of course. Um, we quickly add a recorder, same principle as quickly add a camera. We can add a, a total recorder. It's, it can be an NVR or a DVR or a hybrid. Uh, we can do that for two main reasons. One, if we want to back up one of these uh, devices, or if we want to, um, to create a standalone watching machine for uh, a security guard, for example, instead of using a computer. Same goes for add a recorder manually. We can add a recorder even if it's uh, a, in a different location from the NVR. Default password, this is where we determine the password that the NVR will use to access the cameras of ProVision or of OnVIF, HikVision, Dachwa or uh, how to access a recorder, what will be the password. Very simple and very easy to use and all of that from the application itself. Edit a camera, very simple. Uh, here we gain access to the cameras that are already on the NVR. Then we can uh, change the parameters, for example, the name of the camera, the IP address, uh, ports, username, password. Of course, we can also modify the password for the camera. Next thing will be record. This is where we can control how the NVR is going to record. Same as locally from the NVR. So I just pressed uh, mode settings. Now let's see the options here, same as with the NVR, we can decide if we want to only record by motion or sensor or by motion and the sensor, maybe something that we don't have here by pressing advanced, then we can choose for example only motion and analytics, for example. And of course that we can control if we wanted to record only manually, so only when we press the record button, this is the only way that our NVR is going to record. So for now, we're not going to save it of course and jump into advanced right here okay so in advanced we have here a couple of uh, interesting options cycle recording which basically means FIFO expiration time how long do we want the NVR to record one day uh, or 90 days or customized maybe a period of a period of a customized time a lot of options of course that we can control each camera separately what will be the pre-record of that camera or what would be the delayed recording, so before the event has occurred or after the event has occurred. Let's not save it. Under encoding parameter I can control the encoding, the resolution, frame rate, bit per second, everything. So we have here all of the cameras on our NVR, let's choose for example number 14, we can see that the camera has been encoded by H265, this is the resolution, those are my options, I can change any of them, of course the frame per second, as I said, and the bitrate, everything is changeable through the application. And of course this is useful if you want to control the amount of HDD being used uh, through, the bit, through the encoding parameters. Now of course, those were the parameters when an event takes place. When a line is being crossed or a motion being detected, face being detected, something like that. But we also can control the normal recording stream right here. We can see it. So once I press it, we get to the same screen, but not exactly the same. If I change here the parameters, then that will only apply to a 24-7 recording when nothing else is happening. So basically, 
this is the screen where I take down all of the resolutions and all of the quality of the picture in order to save some disk space but when an event takes place on that uh, screen when we just wore then the resolution jumps back to the highest quality of course that everything is settable and we can uh, change whatever parameter we want under network stream settings we determine the quality of the pictures to be shown when we approach the NVR through the network so it doesn't affect the quality of the recording next we can see that the schedule settings is not operatable it's because that the NVR is set to record on this plan but if we change it to manually right here then um, this is where we determine when the NVR is going to record so we can set the schedule on view recording status this is where we can see live um, the status of the cameras we can see the resolution, the frame per second, the bitrate that has been used and we can see that it records and all of that information next we are going to go into the system so in the system settings we can control the basic system, uh, settings of the NVR uh, starting from the device name, device number, video format it's going to have main and secondary output so by controlling that we can uh, actually fix remote problems if our client calls us and tells us that he sees nothing on the screen we can connect to his uh, device remotely from the app and change the main display's output in case that that is the situation when this television does not support the output resolution a few more things we can enable the wizard so that the next time the NVR uh, uh, reboots and then the wizard will pop up auto sequence and uh, start after meaning after how much time we're going to start the automatic sequence sequence is when a camera jumps one after another we're not going to save date and time I don't think uh, we need to talk about it very much uh, basically everything that has to do with uh, GMT and time settings and we can also have access to the log something has happened we can uh, filter what kind of log we want from here and we can reboot our NVR automatically so next thing is going to be alert this is where we can control the alerts that the NVR produces so for example if we'll go into alarm out we can control when those alarm outs are going to be available for example if we press configure we can determine that the schedule for that alarm will be 24 7 or 24 five days a week two days a week or any other schedule that we can create we can create our own cre uh, schedules so for example if we created a siren that will be activated every time when an unfamiliar face uh, is approaching then we can make that rule that uh, siren to be uh, only available throughout the weekends when no one is here of course that we can also determine how long will take that uh, alert that allow to stop same goes for all of the alarms here by the way those alarms can be either connected to the NVR to the back of the NVR or they can be a part of the IP camera which can be distance uh, 100 to 100 meters away from the NVR email uh, if we we'll press on sender where it says none right here then we can determine the email uh, that the NVR is going to use uh, all of the information the email address, SMTP, server, port and all of the required information of course and we have also the recipients who is going to get the email okay we provided the email address and the schedule do we want the email to be sent 24 7 or do we want it to be sent only two days five days a week or any other schedule that we have set under the display we can set the video pop-up the, dura the duration that it's going to pop on the local screen of the NVR uh, or the message box same thing uh, we have the buzzer settings how long we want the buzzer to beep if we have set for example that the NVR beeps whenever a line is being crossed then we can determine that after one minute the beep will stop push message 
whenever something happens then we want to get a push into our phone so first we can enable it and then we can uh, determine the schedule of course and to test it so we press test and we can see that we have a push message so for the next menus motion alert analytic alert sensor alert general faults this is where we determine settings for each kind of alert so for example motion alert let's choose this here we can see a list of cameras we can see second floor sales desk and all of the other cameras that exist in our nvr now for each of these cameras we can determine that for example if a motion has happened in this camera then we press configure then we determine that when this motion happens during every time of the week or five days a week never mind we can determine that those cameras will record so we can see that second floor camera and sales this camera is set to record we can choose any other camera if we want and we can choose what cameras will take a snapshot what alarms out will be activated and all of the uh, other parameters such as push or buzzer making the NVR beep and all of the rest same principle for analytic alert if for example we will choose line crossing then we can see that we have the same parameters so when okay line crossing when we are in line crossing we can select the karma same as we did with the motion press configure and determine what will happen when a line is being crossed in back counting camera or any other camera that we can see uh, right here okay sensor alert general faults and face recognition alert exactly the same way as we just showed for example face detection choosing the camera and configure it alerts disk uh, this screen will show us every single thing that we need to know about the disk so disk management we can see all of the disks inside our nvr disk number one disk number disk number two we can see the kind of the disk, it's Toshiba, uh, we can see the capacity and we can see another one, small one of uh, just 14 gigabytes, it's the USB, it is also here on the list. We can also see the serial number of the disk, we can see the status, it is uh, set to read write, we can even see the record period of that disk storage mode settings the same exact way that we can choose in our local NVR we can create different groups and assigning them with different disks and the cameras if you want for example to have two important cameras to record for one year then we will take these two cameras and assign them into the same group as one HDD so one HDD will get recordings of these two cameras and uh, the rest of the cameras will go to the other disks disk so we can see here that we have here this is group number one this is group number two let's go to configure group number one and we can see the details we can see the disk one is in this group in group one we can see all of the cameras that are uh, recording into that disk we can also see the amount of cameras right here where it says 14 cameras this is group number two we can see that it contains one disk if we will press configure then we will see disk number two that contains only two cameras uh, one uh, one camera is face attendance and the other face DDA and like before we can see that it contains only two cameras so basically what we did here is that a uh, face attendance and big DDA those are m our important cameras that we want to have recordings for a lot of time so 1.8 terabyte are going to be used to record these two cameras view disk information this is where we can see all of the information regarding to the disk uh, same as we did before 
and smart info if there is something wrong with the smart parameters on our disk then we can see if something happened to our sectors or anything like that of course that we can also see the how much time the disk disk number one has been running we can see the temperature in celsius and we can choose another disk to see that uh, the other parameters of the other disk so we can see the disk number two it has been powered on for 620 days that's a long time okay next will be the network from here we can change all of the parameters of the nvr uh, starting from the ip address the preferred dns as we see here below we can also change the email properties what email the nvr is going to use to send email notifications uh, of course we can see down below the view network status this is where we can see all of the information starting from the uh, preferred dns to the bandwidth being used uh, remaining bandwidth and of course the NAT status and push server status if they are online or offline um, outside for the network we can also see the account and authority this is where we can add user add user edit user delete a user we can edit permission group. Permission groups are are used to give or uh, or take permissions. What what that the user that is a part of this group can do to the NVR or cannot do. Uh, of course, we can see the online users down here below. We can see all of the users that are currently connected to our NVR, and we can manage our block and allow lists. So if you press enable. Then we will get two options here, a low list and a block list. So whatever IP that we will add here, it can be either a local IP or a remote distance IP. That IP will be blocked from entering this uh, NVR. Of course, that we can change it to, to a certain segment or we can also configure it by, wait a second, for MAC address. If you want a specific device, that we know that is harmful, we, we don't want it to connect to our NVR. If we have, a, for example, a, an employee that has left the company and he has the, the application on his phone, but we don't want to change his password because a lot of other employees also use the same password, then we can block his specific Mac. Let's not save anything and so as you can see, this uh, setting, the remote settings, is a, is a place where we can change every parameter in the NVR itself. A very powerful and efficient tool that can be used from the palm of our hands. Let's continue into file. This is where we can see all of the media that has been downloaded into our phone from the application. Starting from uh, videos uh, to photos that we've took. We can see here the same thing. And of course, that for each uh, photo here, we can share. We can share it into WhatsApp or wherever we want. And of course, that uh, unlike other uh, other products, when we share a video file, it is totally playable in other devices, even through WhatsApp, because that the format is stays MP4 and not uh, other formats that uh, WhatsApp cannot recognize. Next, we're going to go into the server list and see a couple of options that we have here. First of all, we can see that this is a camera. This is the model of the camera, the name of it, and here the type. Here we can see that this is an NVR, that's the game, the name we gave it. And what model is it? Actual model, NVR8 and the rest. DVR, we can see that this is a standalone hybrid. Now to the right, we can see this uh, green mark, green antenna, that shows us the status of the NVR. Is it online or is it offline? So a small remark I wanted to say about this. Our application supports up to 32 different devices that we can see their status online. But once we added one more, so if we have 33, then all of them will be offline. Application cannot support this kind of information. And of course, it, it kills the bandwidth. So all we have to do, if we have like 80 different devices, 
by the way the limit is 128 which is a lot so if, if we have a customer that has a lot of uh, branches of stores and he wants to search for one of them he just clicks here and search for his device this is my example du do the local nvr then we can uh, he can find his uh, uh, device and access it a few more things that we can do from here is by press of a button here which turns red we can quickly access the live preview of that certain uh, device let's stop it of course we can delete if you want and we can see all of the information regarding to that device so let's take for information this NVR and let's see what it gives us basic info we can see the name we can see the device let's use the mouse device ID hardware version all of that information um, uh, just to a reminder usually we would be able to access that info information only from the NVR itself but the application allows us uh, a lot of more uh, possibilities like we can see next thing is the channel status this is where we can see uh, the channel name this is one of the current first camera that we have on the NVR we can see the status that that camera is online we can see that no motion is currently detected in that uh, camera we can see that no analytic is uh, currently detected in the camera and we can see that device is recording because we record 24 7 this is how we like it and we can see the next channel I won't go through all of those channels don't worry but you get the idea next alarm status okay this is where we can see oh my bad alarm status this is where we can see all of the alarms what alarm is actually happening into what camera so for example we can see five it's not really error it's actually five motions that are being detected by five different cameras so on the top we can see font door face now on the bottom we can see one out of five so if i'll jump to the next page the page number two we can see that front door face has changed into back counting so i have motion on back counting and on sales office and uh, all of the rest of the cameras and i can see the triggers that are connected to that uh, to that motion so do i have an alarm out no do i ha did i activate the preset of a ptz camera no i didn't snapshot enabled so then that camera will be uh, taking a snapshot when uh, when a motion is being detected then the, will the nvr beep, beep when a motion is being detected no and activate pop-up no and send an email no so i think we get the idea uh, same goes for the an analytics we don't have to go all through that again but the same principle okay let's continue recording status all of the cameras will be in that long list and for each camera let's for example take uh, this in it ch there channel name as we can see here this is one of our cameras this is office dda we can see all of the status let's go for the main office dda for a second each camera we set to record twice once in the full resolution and once in the secondary resolution for uh, a remote playback purposes so first we have the first office dda right here we can see that it records it records 25 frames per second rate uh, the bit rate we can see the resolution and we can see that uh, the recording type is by schedule which is 24 7 and by motion which currently it, uh, it records by motion and we can see another office dda which is basically the other stream that we're recording for the remote playback that i mentioned so we can see that this stream is a lot lighter same frame per second yes but the rate instead of 3072 it's 512 the resolution instead of uh, this resolution we have the d1 resolution and the same recording type and going on to the next camera so we get the idea we have all of the list with all of the information regarding to uh, those cameras so network information this is where we can see uh, all of the information regarding to network starting from the IP address actually we are going to see it in a moment IP address we can see the ports here okay uh, 
total bandwidth remaining we're going to set in a second actually no this is where we see it so we have the IP address subnet gateway and all of the network information HTTP port okay this is the total incoming bandwidth which means that this is the total the capacity of the NVR and this is what is remaining so basically we have used we are using 53 megabytes of uh, of cameras that they are basically using our bandwidth our incoming bandwidth we have also a total of outgoing bandwidth which is, which is 160 and we can see that no one is drawing a video outside of the NVR so this is why the total of outgoing and the remaining is the same number we can see the NAT status and the poor server status disk information we can see disk number one right here and disk number two and we can see their names this one the capacity the remaining capacity status which is read source it's local on the NVR and same for the other disk that's it for the device info last thing here in the server list is the ability to share so one press on the QR code will show us the QR code that whenever someone is uh, scanning that code if he have the password of course he will be able to get access to my camera so for example I can take this NVR okay and if I was um, let's say if I had a store that sells uh, pictures okay and I want to give my clients access to those cameras so I would uh, scan this QR code sending them the QR code giving them you know a user a, a username not admin of course so then they will be able to access my cameras of course I share it by pressing here then they could connect and see the inventory changes in my store which is a great tool to expand my amount of clients also we have the ability to uh, print it and do a lot of other things of course we can share it via whatsapp or wh whatever we want I think we've done with this I don't know if I mentioned it but we can also add of course we can add a device from here next is the push notification now here we can see some very interesting things first of all let's choose the first NVR and this action this uh, trigger on button basically triggers on the push notification ability in the NVR itself it is exactly the same as if I would gone into the NVR connecting the screen and a, and a mouse into it and just turning on the push notification this affects the NVR not the phone so once I trigger that on I won't be surprised if I'll get there there it is I got a push notification straight away now if I want to disable the push notifications because as you can see we have a lot of them then you can just unsubscribe from it but do we want to get some push notifications from something else so we can determine what notification we would like to add, to get from each setting for example let's remove all of this and all of this okay now I didn't want you to wait so I deactivated all of the alarms so now I'll show you how do we choose what are we go gonna get uh, push notifications from so for example let's go into right uh, for example here face detection let's say we want to get push, not push notifications only when uh, for example main passage camera detects a face that's it so now we won't get a ton of push messages just what interests us also we have here the ability to choose exactly what we want I just got a message and I touched with the finger so we couldn't see it so for example let's turn on the sterile area on on the cameras all the cameras for example to let you see how I get messages and pressing save it's, oh there it is one second and I got a message so of course that I don't want all of the cameras let's just choose what's in what's uh, in uh, what's uh, important for us 
and that's it very easy very quickly full control on what push notifications you might get in the meantime let's just disable it so we can continue with our uh, day with our uh, demonstration okay let's continue next thing will be next thing will be the notifications themselves so we can see that we have a couple of uh, notifications here we have a total of 19 and 16 are new we can also tell that uh, the new notifications because they have a red mark next to them so for example let's go for the face detection uh, event once you press it we have four options to play a live video like here or to play the playback from exactly the moment where those faces have been detected so if we'll give it a second we will be able to see someone passing by there it is the next button that we have is well not here face detection we can activate a trigger okay all of the triggers that are uh, uh, related to the NVR whether it is a uh, in the back of the NVR or in a camera, an IP camera, we can also trigger it manually. And the next thing will be to delete the notification by pressing this. Let's press deleted. Now we have extra two buttons here. This one, that button will make all of the all of the events to be uh, old events, not new. As you can see, I already pressed it. And this button here will just delete all of my notifications. Very simple. Next thing will be help. In the help menu we can see a list of subjects starting from live view and the notifications. Doesn't matter what we are going to press, we are going to see the explanation. So we have two layers. The bottom layer tells us, the shows us the live view itself and on the on the top we can see the explanation for what each button does so this is a great way to understand things that we didn't understand before or to get to know the application better of course we have that for a, every every menu we can scroll up and down file for example file list everything here is very very simple and clear uh, the last thing we have here is the about in the about we can see the version okay we can see also the our phone and what phone we are well, we're using we can see the user experience program the bug report if we encountered any kind of uh, bug so we can send it and uh, make the program a little bit better of course we have the legal statement and the privacy statement and actually this is the end of today's webinar I was David from Provision ISR. This was a webinar about Provision ISR scam to application. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I have. Uh, have a good day. Take care. And hope to see you in the next webinars. Thank you.